I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube and TikTok about adding a cam and headers to an LS engine to get cheap horsepower. But most of us will get what we have right here, which is a junkyard engine out of a Silverado 2500 gasser. This is a 6.0 LQ4, better known online as an LS engine with an iron block. We are gonna plan on using Amazon as much as possible to keep this as a budget-friendly build and rebuild this entire engine from the ground up. <laughs> Welcome to Twisted Ignition. I'm Nate. We have this beautiful engine that we're going to be tearing down. It's all in preparation for a new budget build video that I have of my own. I have a project that we have in mind. I'm not going to go and share too much information right now because the car we're going to put in, this engine in is not your typical car that you'd see an LS in. Don't need that. Now, I'm not gonna be reusing this intake or throttle body. I have bigger ideas to go with it because I'd like to do force induction. Kind of depends on how this works out. I need a longer extension. I do apologize about the lighting. This is my little garage that's on my house and it's not the greatest compared to Mike's shop or Rick's shop that we typically work in. So it, it's the best that I could do with what I got. So yeah. We have this coil pack, which is already missing a spark plug. Well, we're probably not gonna be using this again, but I am gonna salvage all the parts on this because I do have another block and I plan on rebuilding that one for a different project in the future, but I really wanted to get moving on this one uh, because, uh, well, I, got, I finally got all the tools in, so yeah. Next, I'm going to focus on getting all the accessories off so we could get a good view of just the block and heads. So that's getting rid of the alternator, the power steering pump, and the water pump. This crank pulley is actually just on for show. <laughs> so I'll be taking that off too. On a side note, I don't know if you could hear that. There's a lot of angry grinding in that alternator, so I'll probably just use this as a core and not really worry about this thing too much. Water pump off. Next thing I'm gonna do is, like I said, uh, take off this uh, crank pulley. It's just on for show. The, the bolt isn't even on. So, just gonna wiggle that off. Just ignore that. When you're pulling this engine apart for the first time, this will be a pain in the butt to get off. This engine has been apart a couple of times, so. This comes out pretty nice. We are gonna get a whole gasket kit from Amazon that will replace this gasket along with others. So into the trash it goes. The next thing I'm gonna pull off is actually the timing cover. Timing cover off. We have an oil pickup tube right here that we're actually gonna have to flip the entire engine over so we can take off the oil pan and make sure we get that oil pickup tube out before we go and try to take off the oil pump. Woo that scared me. If you are like me and like to stay as organized as possible when you're doing a build like this, put your bolts back right where you took them out. It'll be harder to lose track of them and where bolts go where. Plus, I'm not sure if everything I'm buying off of Amazon comes with its own hardware, so it's better safe than sorry. 
Now with everything else that I'm going to be touching is covered in oil, I'm going to put on some gloves. Oh yeah. Should be able to just wiggle this out and take off our splash plate. Now we're going to gently spin this back over. Okay, not gently. Oh God, that's heavy. Okay, got a little worried there. Now we're going to take off the oil pump and the timing chain. I'm actually going to take off the crank bolt because I don't know if that's going to get it in the way. And I don't think it was. Next, we're going to take off the valve covers. Because we're not reusing any of these things and it's suiting to the video. I got a wonderful Amazon box that we're gonna throw everything in. All right, now we're gonna start taking off the head. I like to take off all the bottom ones, all the ones inside the head, leave the bolts for the top of the head last, just so you could hold on to the head and take off the last bolt. Usually a better grip than trying to get something from down below or inside out of the way. It's not good. Oh no, the threads are not bad. It must have just been that much corrosion inside. At least that's what I'm gonna say to myself. I'm gonna leave the center one on the top. Grab it with your thumb. Have a good strong hand on it. Use your strong hand. Take it off. Smack it and then it slides right off. There we go. Now that our block is completely stripped down and looks like a Wish version of Pinhead, we are gonna take off this plate in order to pull out the camshaft. And before we do that, we're actually gonna take out all the roller bearings. And there is our camshaft, which actually looking at the lobes and everything, in a pretty good shape for the camshaft. As I was saying, we're doing a complete teardown and rebuild, so you can't do that without taking, okay, without taking your crankshaft out and taking your pistons out. We're actually gonna screw back in our crank bolt so we have something to rotate the crank with. Okay, that is not good at all. The, the whole crankshaft is not rotating. So what I'm gonna try to attempt to do is actually not something that I really want to do, but I'm gonna try to loosen up the caps for the crankshaft and see if I could get it to rotate once they're all loosened. Hoping to avoid that because I don't want the crankshaft to really move around and the journals get scored up. Let's see if I can turn the crank now. That is really not good. Plan Q. I'm gonna get what uh, connecting rods I can, get the caps removed, pop those pistons out, and see if that helps at all. able to get two pistons out and that's about it. Let's see if missing two will help. <clears throat> no, it won't. All right, I was trying to think of different ways to go and get this crankshaft to rotate for me. I figured it out, at least the way that it will work for now. I got my wrench and I'm just been Uh, hitting it, but it is slowly rotating, which is a plus. 
that means we could get the rest of the pistons out and go from there. Starting to see some of the problem. So this is what might be going and working against us. You could see right there, we got all that carbon build up right on that oil ring. And that all along the side of the piston. I think this piston is just like, along with a few other, is really grabbing onto the cylinder walls and making it hard to turn. We got all the pistons out and in order, which is awesome. Once more and more came out, we were able to rotate the crankshaft a lot easier, so that was nice. Now, we're gonna get these main caps off so we could pull out the crank. And once we do that, we're gonna start getting into measurements. I want a good before and after measurements of all of our journals and our gaps for our oil clearances. So I know how bad this engine was before I start putting everything back together. Now that we have everything loose, I'm just gonna tap it a little bit with a hammer. They're moving slightly, but not, not in the direction I want them to go in. For those who were probably saying that I'm an idiot, in the comments down below, you would be right. Um, so thank God I didn't put too much pressure on this main because there's actually bolts coming in from the side of the block into the cap. And then once you remove them, conveniently it comes apart. Now, the piste de resistance. Ah, the crankshaft is finally out. I have one of the heads up on the table. I got myself one of these valve spring remover tools right off of Amazon and uh, don't know how it's gonna work, but it looked promising. I'd like the support on the valve side and actually pulling the spring in. So we'll go give this guy a try. I just got this tool in, so there's still a lot of adjustments that I gotta do for it. There we go. So pushed it in, I'm able to get my keepers out. Release it, bring it all the way off. The hat and the spring. And if I push out, I can get my valve out. I like this tool. It's actually not that bad of a tool. Let me get the rest of these springs and start doing some measurements. I used a lot of valve compression spring tools in the past and a lot of them that are cheap are pretty bad. I'm very, very impressed with this one. This was uh, literally 20 bucks off of Amazon and um, very easy. As soon as you get it adjusted to where you need it, it is good to clamp down. Um, I had absolutely no issues actually taking any of these valve springs out, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, the next step that we're going to do now is check some play in the valves, which, I mean, I don't believe we're going to get much because these actually feel very tight in here. So go and measuring everything and making sure I go over with my straight edge. It's starting to seem that everything looks good except when it comes to these edges. And that's because the aluminum actually started bubbling up and having some corrosion. I don't actually think it's any of the mating surfaces that's giving me um, any gaps. So for all intents and purposes, this head is actually very flat, which is awesome. I'm still gonna go and clean it up a little bit more. I wiped it down to get some of the, the loose dirt and uh, oil off of the surface while I was measuring it because it was really messing it up the first time. Now I did find this nice little engine build sheet that does go over some of the things that I want to go and keep track of. Uh, we're probably just going to focus on oil clearances 
and everything like that. Just kind of see how everything was worn before we go put all this new stuff in. Just to kind of get an idea of how bad the engine or how good of an engine it was before I got it and started tearing it apart. I'm done with all my measurements, and from what I can tell, it is a really good conditioned engine for not knowing the miles on it or how long it truly been sitting in a shed. Everything that came out of it, like the pistons, the crank, and the cam, all look in pretty good shape, and honestly, I have full confidence if I put this all back together and run it, it run beautifully. But we are gonna be doing a whole rebuild, like I said, from Amazon parts, top to bottom, and giving this a good overhaul on top of throwing some goody goodies at it as well because we want to get a little bit more power out of this LS engine once it gets into its new home. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more content like this where we are doing a whole bunch of budget build projects on this channel. We have this LS engine that we're doing all with Amazon. We also still have a Pro Street C10 still a little bit in pieces that we didn't get to obx but we are going to be getting back in the swing with that c10 and getting it actually finalized running and we also have a new 350 that replaces the one that blew up anyway guys thank you so much for watching I'll see you on the next shenanigans later